Hi all, Craig and Latte here. It's that time again where I bring you my tips, facts, or experience that you may or may not find helpful. Archaeology is a profession that's been around for quite some time and certainly has some mixed reviews. Some love it, some hate it, but whether you enjoy it or not, you might want to start looking into what you can get out of it if you've not completed it or bothered with it at all. Archaeology, in case you're unaware, is a secondary profession, meaning it's one of the three extras that every character can have without sacrificing one of their main two professions. And it has a lot of collectibles and achievements behind it. Toys, titles, mounts, pets, and even that sandstone drake recipe for alchemy. There's a lot tied to it. Additionally, whether you know it or not, it's a huge source of in-game lore. Histories and backgrounds on civilizations, characters, special items, and even things that have yet to be fully explained or unlocked, such as the puzzle box of yogg saron which may even have some prophetic foreshadowing that could be relevant as soon as the Dragonflight expansion itself. Now, I'm bringing all of this to your attention because I have noticed something odd, and that is that archaeology has not been updated for the second expansion in a row. Shadowlands did not have a new segment for it, and Dragonflight doesn't seem to either. Despite the Explorers League and the Reliquary, the two archaeology-based factions, being major players in the new expansion story. The reason you might want to fire up your surveying equipment rather soon, and to be perfectly clear this is just my speculation, is that I suspect Blizzard is planning to do a major overhaul on the archaeology profession. There is the possibility that it could just be removed, like First Aid technically was, if you remember that, and lumped into another profession. But, whether it's being overhauled or pulled out, that means something from this profession may be lost if you wait too long. It's not uncommon for things in this game to be removed when it gets updated. I know Dragonflight just launched, and you probably don't care that much about archaeology because you're super excited for the new expansion. But I'm warning you now, because this is not a profession you could complete in just a couple days if you wanted to collect everything, and if the announcement to remove or overhaul the profession were to come soon. It would take you quite a while to get everything. I happen to be a collector and I love Warcraft lore myself, so when I'm not eyebrows deep in the new expansion, I'm going to be working on finishing archaeology to make sure I'm not going to accidentally miss out on anything, including achievements. I highly recommend you do the same. As a little idea on just what kind of collectibles you can get out of archaeology, I've done a video that covers everything I could find listed for it. This doesn't include the written lore, of course, because there's a lot of that, but at least the toys, pets, mounts, and so on that you may want to snag soon. Why don't we take a look into something different and see what kind of goodies we can get from archaeology? I feel like this is an underappreciated profession, which actually can give a lot of collectibles as well as lore snippets. So in this video, we'll preview some things you can get out of this profession. To give you an idea of just how much stuff there is to collect from this profession, Here's a quick sum before we look at specifics. Five titles, four mounts, 10 pets, 18 toys, 24 plus buy non account pieces of gear, one alchemy recipe, which is also one of the mounts, and one heirloom weapon, which is also one of the BOA items. Wow, that's pretty impressive, right? And that's just what I could find. There may be even more than that but I will have a list on the right of the items in each category. This is just to give you a little taste of what you could get from this profession. Assistant Professor is from the I Had It In My Hand achievement, which is a finding one rare artifact. Pretty simple. Associate Professor, the next step up, is from the What Was Briefly Yours Is Now Mine achievement, which is finding 10 rare artifacts. Professor is from the It Belongs in a Museum achievement, which is the next step up of finding 20 rare artifacts. None of those are actually that bad. You can do it. 
The title Seeker of Knowledge is a little different and comes from the Seat of Knowledge achievement, which is to restore and display every pristine Pandaren and Mogu artifact from Mists of Pandaria. This deals with the lore walkers and such found in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. And the last one, the most recently added that I could find, is the Groundbreaker, which is a pretty cool one. This comes from the achievement No Stone Unturned, which is to just complete 250 Legion dig sites. That's, I say just, but that's quite a few dig sites. Now the rest of these items are not from achievements. The titles are achievements, but the items are not. These are from racial slash categorical artifact discoveries, which is just by doing archaeology and solving until you get the stuff you want. Mounts and the one alchemy recipe. The fossilized raptor comes from vanilla's fossil category and isn't as rare as the rest on the list list, but it's still a cool mount nonetheless. The scepter of Azj Akir and the recipe vial of the sands both come from cataclysm's tolvir category. The, it's fun to note that the Scepter of Az Akir item gives you the one of the Quaraji mounts, the ultramarine one showing here on screen. And it's the only Quaraji mount unless you have the black battle tank one from Vanilla that you can ride outside of Ankaraj. You can ride it anywhere. It's a ground mount. I don't have it. I really want it. I'm jealous. <laughs> The recipe one, though, the Vial of the Sands, is rather special, since it is a rare drop from Canopic Jar Solves, which means it's a chance on a chance to get. And you can see where that's going. And on top of that, it's a bind on pickup recipe. So if you can't get it, well, if you get it, you can't give it to someone. You can't get it off the auction house. Which means if you want this, you'd best be doing that on your alchemist if you want to learn the recipe. The mound itself, which is the sandstone drake, you can buy, buy and sell on the auction house, and it's a pretty good money maker if you can get your hands on the recipe, that is. Then we've got the Spear of Ekero, which is technically from a quest line, not a rare solve. However, this specific quest is only available once every six months. That's right, six months. The quest itself is up for two weeks, but once it's gone, you won't see it for another six months. Ouch. That's what makes this one rare. So you know how to get this and what you're looking at. You go to the archaeology trainer in Legion's Dalaran and look at what quest she is offering. She'll have a quest for you each week. The one that you want that will get you the mount is called the Right Path. It starts that little quest chain. Oh, and this mount can fly, by the way. So it's cool. It's a ghost moose that can fly. Who doesn't want that, right? Moving on from mounts, let's look at pets. There are 10 of those. The Clockwork Gnome is from Vanilla's Dwarf category. The Fossilized Hatchling and Pterodax Hatchling both come from Vanilla's Fossil category. You'll probably get those two before you get them out if you're trying to get the, the Fossilized Raptor. They sell for good gold though if you get duplicates. And then the, also from Vanilla, you've got a vo the Voodoo figurine, which comes from the Troll category in Vanilla. The Crawling Claw comes from Cataclysm's Tolvir category, which the other two mounts, the, the Viola Sounds and the Karaji one, also come from. But it's just as rare, in my experience, as the two mounts, so good luck with that one. Super cool little hand, though. The Ancient Nest Guardian comes from Warlord of Draenor's Arakoa category, and the Frostwolf Ghost Pup comes from the Draenor Clans category. Both of those in in, uh, in Draenor, the AU Draenor one. Wormy Tunkins comes from the Demonic category in Legion. He's the only pet from there, and I feel like he's a reference to something with that kind of name, but who knows. Moving on, we've got the Pile of Bones, which teaches you the Restored Revenant from Battle for Azeroth's Drust category. And then the Intact Direhorn Egg teaches you the Direhorn Hatchling, which comes from, you guessed it, BFA's Zandalari category. Phew, <laughs> that's already a lot, isn't it? And there's a lot more. Some of these things I didn't even know about, and I've done archaeology a lot over the years, though it has been quite a while since I did some digging last. 
And there's still 18 toys and some 24-ish BOA items to go. Dang. Well, to help us all out, I found a sweet guide that I wish I found before making this video <laughs> that lists out all of this stuff, as well as what solve each items come from. I've got that linked for you in the description so you can take a look at it if you want more, so I'm not gonna keep listing everything for you that's boring, but I thought I'd give you a little taste. And shout out to David Alien who made that guide, and big thank you! I'll be using this myself, since it looks like there's a lot of things I don't have. Oh boy! I hope you all have fun with this. This is just a nice little little snippet. Did you know that there's an archaeology quest in Legion Dalaran that rewards a great item worth 5,000 gold? This reward starts with the quest called Worth Its Weight, and you can find it at the archaeology trainer in Legion Dalaran. However, this quest is not up often, and is actually so rare, it's only up for two weeks out of every 6.5 months. So, only once a year! The reason it's so rare is because the archaeology quests from this trainer change on a list rotation every two weeks. You can find this list under the achievement This Side Up. The 5,000 gold one here is the Crown Jewels of Suramar. The quests do rotate in order of this list, and you can see them on the map in Dalaran so that you know what's available at any time. However, there is another stipulation with this specific rare quest. Despite how rare it is, you can actually only do it once per character. This alt here did it all the way back in Legion and still can't do it again. So, you can only do this on as many alts as you have. Doing the quest is very simple, and you don't need to have archaeology leveled, but I do recommend your characters be at least level 45, as it does take place in Suramar, a level 45 plus zone. Now, it is quite easy, but is it fast? Actually, it's not bad. While the jewels you are collecting mostly come from angry spirits that attack you while you dig, and those have a random chance at spawning, it only seems to take me 20 to 30 minutes on any alt to get all six jewels. Considering 5k is more than most other raw gold sources these days, I'd say that's not bad, and it's easy. But it's up to you if you really feel it's worth its weight. The Lorewalkers faction is likely the easiest reputation to gain in the game, and you can do it in just under an hour. It doesn't even require any mob grinds or dailies. Instead, you do exactly what you'd expect Lorewalker Cho would want you to do. Travel all over Pandaria and read stuff. Luckily, you don't actually have to read them unless you'd like to. They do give some interesting lore. Regardless, there's a couple of reasons you'd want this reputation at Exalted, even on some of your alts. If you head to the Quartermaster in the Seat of Knowledge, found in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms at the east side, you'll see that she only has a few items on sale. One is a mount, the Disc of the Red Flying Cloud. And there's a tabard, but the others have to do with archaeology. The Manted Artifact Hunter's Kit is the most important one, actually, and the reason that you would want this on alts. I'll cover why you want that one in its own video coming soon, but first you'll need the rep at Exalted before you can do anything. If this is your first time gaining this rep, then you'll want to keep an eye on where you're at while we go, because once you hit Revered, you can buy the Grand Commendation of the Lorewalker's item. Use it, and your entire account will gain 100% increased rep gains forever. It's the closest we can get to account-wide rep, so make use of it, because it will cut time on this rep to just 20 or 30 minutes in the future. Now, how you get this rep is super easy. First, pick up four add-ons. TomTom, Paste, Handy Notes, and Handy Notes Lorewalkers. Even if you don't like add-ons, I implore you, you'll be pulling out your hair trying to find all of these scrolls without directions, because there are a lot of them, and kinda hard to see in some locations. Otherwise, they're really easy to get, and you don't even have to dismount for most of them. 
The reason we're hunting all of these scrolls down is because we need to complete the achievements that want us to click on them or read them, which is exactly how we gain the rep. The scrolls themselves won't give rep, but the achievements do. That's why it's important to make sure that you get all of them. Handy notes will remove the number mark as you complete each location. And the reason we picked up Tom Tom and Paste is because the locations for the Crossrung Wild Scrolls are incorrect in Handy Notes for some reason, and the one in the Veiled Stair is missing entirely. So to prevent us from flying in confused circles, I made correct waypoints for you, which are listed in the description below. Now, if this was your first time, make sure to collect all of them. There are more on the Isle of Thunder as well, but I'm unsure if you need those or not for your first time, because the Grand Commendation is forever, I got it back in Pandaria so I don't remember, and I can't turn it off to test it for you. So we'll come back to that in a second. Because once you've completed these achievements, you'll notice that you've instantly got mail from Lorewalker Cho. He sent you a boatload of quest items, which you will turn into him in the Seat of Knowledge where you found the Quartermaster. Make sure you're not in BFA time as well, or you may not see him, so talk to Zadormi just outside if you need to. These quests will also give you a ton of reputation, which is why I'm suggesting you turn all these in first before going to read the ones on the Isle of Thunder, in case you don't need them, because those ones are a little harder to find. And if you do need them, Handy Notes will have them marked for you as well, so it's the same ordeal as before. Find them, read them, get the achievements, and then turn in the quests. After all of that, you will be exalted and you can buy your mount, get the Tabard Mog, and have access to those mysterious archaeology items. Nice! Now, as a further tip, since I mentioned that you may want this on alts, and you'll have now used the Grand Commendation for the extra rep bonus, you'll find that you won't need to get all of them on alts. It seems to be only four or five of the achievements and their respective quests to hit Exalted. And of course, you'll need even less if you have a Holiday or Darkmoon Fair rep buff on. But that's still pretty much everything up to part of just one zone scrolls, so it's up to you if you want to do just the minimum or all of them, since it is so easy. In a previous video, I covered just how easy it is to gain Exalted with the Lorewalkers faction in Pandaria. I'd mentioned the reason you'd want this on alts is so that you have access to the Manted Artifact Hunter's Kit. So if you've not seen that video, pause and go watch that now. The link is in the description for you. Now why you may want access to this item on more than one character, I will cover in the next video. For this topic here, we need to cover what this item does, how to use it, and more importantly, what we can get out of it. First, you need Exalted with the Lorewalker's rep to buy this item, so if you don't have that yet, that's why you need to watch that video on how to do so. And don't worry, the whole process only takes like 20 to 40 minutes. It's really fast. Second, you need your archaeology at level 525 for this item to be of any use to you. This is because you cannot do archaeology in Pandaria until that point. I will also cover how best to do that in the next video, because it's tied with the alt topic. On to the item itself. The Manted Artifact Hunter's Kit costs two restored artifacts, which you can get easily by doing dig sites in Pandaria, Draenor, the Broken Isles, or Kul Tiras and Zandalar, and then clicking on the items you get from a completed solve to restore them. The Manted Kit itself, as the tooltip says, contains a Manted Artifact Sonic Locator, which causes any new dig sites you discover in Pandaria to be of Manted origin for a day. This means that so long as you hold the Sonic Locator it gives you when you open the kit, for the next 24 hours, all Pandaria dig sites will be Manted, not Mogu and not Pandaren. Why this is significant is because Manted dig sites tend to be very small and very close together, and only found around the Townlong Steps and Dread Wastes and they are often clustered in these zones' little islands around the coast, which really speeds things up by quite a bit. Also note that the kit comes with a map that will let you reroll all of your dig sites into manted dig sites immediately, so that's handy. 
This means that your solve progress will go way faster because you won't be traveling such great distances to each dig site, and you will be funneling a single type of fragment instead of multiple. And while you could argue that Legion's archaeology sites do the same thing by default, the reason Mantid still comes out on top is because the Legion solves, regardless of what race, require a lot more fragments to complete in varying degrees, whereas Mantid stay at 50 for every single solve. Now to the next important point. If you're only doing Mantid dig sites, then you're only going to get Mantid solves, which means you won't make progress on other types of solves. So here's the trick. If you go to the Archaeology Trainer in the Seat of Knowledge, in Ashran, in Legion Dalaran, and in Kul Tiras or Xandalar, you'll notice that they sell other types of fragments for the cost of restored artifacts. Ah, there is where the magic happens. It is important to note which trainer sells what fragments, as older trainers won't sell newer fragments and the BFA ones can't be bought at all. In our case, the Tolvir fragments for the mounts can be bought here in the Vale since those are from Cataclysm, the expansion previous to Mr. Pandaria. And I'm sure you'll notice that you can't buy these until your archaeology is level 600, but don't worry, that'll happen naturally as you work through your Manted dig sites. 525 to 600 will go quick. But I hope you see where this is going. You saw the title of this video, you want that Karaji battle tank mount. Have you ever tried farming Tolvir dig sites naturally? I mean by digging in Kalimdor over and over and over and hoping that the right dig site spawns. It's a nightmare. Even with fossil solves, since that one gives the fossilized raptor mount, uh, those are just as painful. Instead, you can skip all that garbo by going straight to Mantid and funneling your restored artifacts into the Tolvir box. It's way faster. And of course, this means you can do that with pretty much any other type of solve from any expansion except BFA. That's why I mentioned the fossilized raptor, because there are a ton of cool things you can get from archaeology, and I happen to have covered a good majority of them in another video, also linked in the description, so check that out if you're curious. As a bonus tip, make sure to do this farming on an alchemist. Because, if you're already grinding Tolvir, you have a chance at getting the Sandstone Drake recipe from the Canopic Jars that you'll solve for once in a while. That recipe is also bind on pickup, so you can't sell it and you can't give it to alts if you find it. If you're not an alchemist, you just kind of have to delete it. If you get your hands on it, it could be a great way to make some gold, or at the very least, nice to have in your collection. But of course, there is more to this. Why would you want this on alts and not just your main archaeologist character? I'll cover that delicious tip as well as how to level your archaeology best in the next video. Last week I covered two related topics. How to get the Lorewalkers rep to Exalted in a very short amount of time, and how to use the special Manted items to farm a Koraji battle tank mount faster. I mentioned in both those videos that you'd want that information for your alts. This is that video where we combine the knowledge into a delicious alt farming burrito. And of course, if you've not seen those videos, you will want to go watch those after this one, because you'll need to know how to do those two things, or this won't work for you. Those are linked in the description and in a pin below. So, why do you want this on your alts? The quick and dirty answer that you might have put together by now if you saw the previous two videos is that you can level all the way to the current max level with archaeology. Yeah, you heard me. But by itself, that sounds kind of boring. So let's not focus on the leveling part because this is what I like to call a multi-farm, my favorite activity in WoW. A multi-farm, by my definition, is when you focus on farming a specific something but you're also getting multiple other things at the same time, basically, for no extra effort. An easy example of this is going into a legacy raid to farm a mount, like Invincible or something. At the same time, you may be getting reputation, transmog, pets, achievements, and gold, depending on the raid. We technically do this all the time. In this case here, let's put together two things that can be fairly bland on their own to create a glorious multi-farm. 
alt leveling, and archaeology grinding. So, be honest, do you have all the mounts, pets, toys, and transmog from archaeology? Do you have all your ults at the current max level? If you answered no to both those things, or honestly even one, then let's get this set up! First off, choose the ult you want to start this on. Any ult. Class doesn't matter, race doesn't matter, main professions don't matter, except for one, and we'll come back to that. And you can technically start this as soon as level 10, though travel will be far easier if you can fly. Up to you, though. With your alt selected, get them all set up as you normally would for leveling. You know, heirlooms, gliders, set your hearth, get bigger bags, check your talents, etc. Whatever you normally do. Also, turn on Legion Chromi Time if you're low enough level, and War Mode if you're at least level 20. You'll want Chromi Time so that the zones scale up properly on low level alts, and War Mode will give you extra XP. Also check for Darkmoon Fair or any other active holiday buffs as well, because any XP buffs are going to be great here. Now, let's head to Legion Dalaran. First, go to the Archaeology Trainer and train up to the max level offered. We only need to go up to Legion, so it's up to you if you want higher than that, depending on what you're farming. If you want the current max, the BFA Trainer will be who you need to see. Oh, and if you're at least level 45, you can take the quest that the trainer offers if you want. It's not required, though I do recommend you check on Wowhead to see what that quest chain rewards. It could be a mount, a toy, or a pet that you don't have, and those quests rotate every two weeks on a six or so month rotation, so certainly look into that before you start digging. Otherwise, we need to dig until we get our archaeology to 525 before we can go to Pandaria for the Mantid digs. Legion, in my opinion, is the best way to do so. Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor, Draenor, Broken Isles, and Zandalar and Kul'Thuras will all let you start digging right away at Archaeology Level 1. But, remember how I said this was a multi-farm? Let's say you want to focus on farming the Quaraji Mount. The best way to farm that is with turning in restored artifacts, which will only come from Pandaria and newer expansion archaeology. So, no vanilla through catazones. Draenor and BFA digs, on the other hand, are spread out all over the place and will have you digging for more than one race at a time. In our case, we want restored artifacts as fast as possible, so that's why we want Legion. It focuses in just one zone with just one racial dig at a time for easy travel and streamlined solves. And four of the five zones are level 10 friendly, which will not be the case for other expansions. Only Suramar will require level 45, but the zones rotate every two weeks with the archaeology quests. So if Suramar is up when you go to do this, you can either wait, level to 45 another way, or choose another alt for the time being. Before you start digging, I also recommend getting an archaeology add-on to make your life easier. Archie is my favorite. It has menus with solve buttons and status bars, it works with TomTom Tom for waypoints to the next dig site, it has sound cues when you've located a dig spot, and much more. I'm sure you'll love it. Make sure to pick up the one from wago.io as that seems to be the one that's working as of this video. Link for it is in the description. Once you start digging, it'll likely take you a little less than two hours to get from 1 to 525 if you have flying, longer if you don't. During which, I got around 70-ish restored artifacts and went from 60 to almost 63. Most of my alts are 50 or 60, so I chose a 60. Now, with archaeology at 525, it's Pandaria time. Specifically, Lorewalker's rep time. You will absolutely want flying for this, so if you decided to start on a level 10 and you're not 30 yet, keep going with Legion digs or level in other ways if you're impatient, but believe me, you're going to want all those restored artifacts. It sure would be satisfying if you had a few hundred to turn in at once, eh? If you want to know how to hit Exalted with the Lorewalkers in just 20 to 40 minutes, you're going to want my video on the topic. Because before you do any digging in Pandaria, you need the Manted Artifact Hunter's Kit, which requires Exalted with the Lorewalkers. Don't worry, I promise you it's super easy. 
Then, watch the sequel video on how to farm the Ultramarine Karaji Battle Tank if you haven't, because I explain exactly how to use the Manted Artifact Hunter's Kit and what to do with your restored artifacts. And now, with all that knowledge in your head, it's time to farm Manted Digs. Put on a movie or watch your favorite streamer, I stream by the way, Kraken Latte on Twitch, link in description, <laughs> anyway, or anything else you prefer. Because now you're all set up. You can just farm to your heart's content and level at the same time. And don't worry, I didn't forget about that main profession I said you might need. If you are going to turn in restored artifacts for Tolvir relics, then you might consider picking up alchemy on your alt. It's not required by any stretch, but there is a chance at the Vial of Sands recipe for alchemists from the Canopic Jar Solves. That recipe is bind on pickup as well, so it'd be a shame to waste it. It's pretty rare. Other than all that, it's pretty simple from here on out. After you've gone on for a while, maybe you've hit max level, maybe you haven't, you've turned in gobs of restored artifacts and just haven't yet got what you want. So as someone who has a lot of alts and has done a lot of mount farming, I have a strong hunch that each character has a hidden luck stat when they created. So if you're just striking out like ridiculously bad, try another alt. And if you feel like you're going to burn out or the farm is just too daunting, perhaps try setting shorter goals. You can easily use your alts levels as mini steps. Perhaps do one or a few levels a day or week, and then stop doing it on that alt once they hit max level to keep the XP rolling. You could even rotate alts at certain points to keep it interesting and to build up rested XP. Archaeology does benefit from the rested bonus, but since it takes 10 days to get full rested, it isn't worth waiting for unless you aren't playing much or have enough alts to rotate. Did you know I stream on Twitch now? I do everything from transmog to leveling to gold making, and I'm live five days a week to chat with. So. Come hang out! And there we have it! If you think I've missed information, or you want to request I do a specific guide, let me know in the comments below. Even if I don't answer you, I just might add your idea to my list. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.